Blaze is doing a graphics tablet review. Yay! Hi everyone! Uh, I'm here today with something a little different. Uh, I was recently reached out to by the kind folks at Gammon to review their PD1560 graphics tablet. Or is it a uh, PD1560? PD 1560. I was honestly not expecting to receive any kind of sponsorships or opportunities like this on YouTube, uh, so this was a very, very pleasant surprise. Uh, now all I need to do is reach 100k subscribers and then I can finally rest and watch the sunrise over a great blue universe. Anyway, enough messing around, let's get on to the unboxing. The package arrived safe and sound, and my cats were very eager to get it unboxed so that they could play in it. Uh, but they absolutely did not approve of me using a sharp object to open it. And let me see what you have! No! The packaging here is really nothing that special. It's function over aesthetic. No extra bells and whistles, no handwritten note telling you how much that the provider loves and appreciates you, hugs and kisses. Uh, it's purely functional and that's fine. Everything is stored like a perfect little game of Tetris. Uh, the first thing that you will see when you open up is your adjustable stand for making sure that you have your tablet at the most comfortable angle. And beside it we have a USA adapter, which is brilliant because I do not live in the US and I would definitely need this. Uh, also I apologize for the state of my nails, I applied nail polish maybe two days ago and it had started to chip. Uh, we also have this lovely little user guide right here which contains your instructions for setting everything up. And on the back it provides you with links to where you can download the driver necessary for getting this little bad boy to actually work. Here we have a big old box that's filled with accessories such as this lovely charger that my camera just refused to focus on correctly, a 3-in-1 cable, a USB connector, and a handy dandy little Allen key in case you didn't already own one. My camera also did not want to focus on it. Here we have our wee pen holder, which I was holding upside down because I am an absolute orangutan. And this contains all your extra pen nibs and a little clip for removing old nibs for your pen. And speaking of which, in this box we have our lovely rechargeable pen with 8192 pressure levels. Ooh, tis light, tis comfy. It's a pen, it's a pen. Below all of these goodies you will find a lovely branded smudge guard. Uh, in case you didn't already own one. Uh, these things are always great for avoiding getting sweat and grease all over your tablet screen while drawing and avoiding any annoying sticking. Below that again you'll find a lovely big wallet protective case for the actual screen tablet itself. It's made of a nice felt-like material and though it isn't especially sturdy it'll keep your tablet from getting dusty or scratched. And now the big reveal. Here she is. I thought she was like super long when I originally removed her from the packaging, but she's actually just a standard 16x9 1080p resolution screen with a workable display area of 15.6 inches with the extra space for the lovely hotkey buttons. Hello, reflection. Damn, my wrists are so skinny. What the hell? And that's everything you'll find in the box. All the stuff you need with the bonus of a nice glove and the plug adapter. Uh, while I continue to ascend up on this chair to get a better view of the entire set, I shall hand you over to Future Blaze so she can talk you through the actual review. Uh, just a heads up, I am recording this several days later and I've got a little bit of a sore throat, so yeah. Okie dokie, let's get this thing set up. Also a disclaimer, the lighting in my workspace is pretty awful as I have a south facing window and we're in the middle of summer and I don't have any blinds yet so I'm using this old bed sheet to block out the sun and now everything has an ambient warm glow. Uh, anyway, setup was much easier than anticipated even for someone as technologically inept as I. Uh, just make sure you uninstall any drivers for any previous screen tablets you may have used in the past and it will be smooth sailing. The hardest part was probably assembling the stand. I've worked with screw-in stands like this for tablets before, and this one is no less finicky than the others. Your best bet is to screw in the top two screws with the stand completely flat, and then raise the stand to reach the bottom two screws. I was doing this one-handed, so it's not the most graceful demonstration, but once it's all done, it's really sturdy and secure. The cables went in like a dream, and I was initially impressed with the length of the 3-in-1 cable, but as you'll be able to see with my workspace setup, it only just managed to reach the ports at the back of my tar. And due to how I have my desk set up, I get these annoying wee wires poking out on the right, but that's honestly just a nitpick. If you have a different workspace setup or if you're working on a laptop, you'll most likely have a much easier time with this. 
I did run into a tiny bit of an issue while trying to remove the protective film covering the screen. I accidentally ended up pulling off a little bit of the actual screen protector as well, and it ended up creating some air bubbles between the screen protector and the screen itself. I was, however, able to get rid of most of them with a microfiber cloth, and I will stress though that this was entirely my own fault. Anyway, let's get the software started and boot her up. Alas, I am a little bit of an idiot when it comes to software, so I did encounter a few hiccups along the way, but it was entirely my own doing. If you install the driver properly, you won't run into any issues. This was honestly the simplest driver setup I think I've ever experienced. It was very straightforward. Now that we're all properly set up, let's get on to the review! In the background, I'll be showing off a speed paint that I completed using the tablet. It's a Wings of Fire painting for a thumbnail contest, just to give you something nice and interesting to look at while I talk. The first and most obvious thing to comment on is the pen. Those 8192 levels of pen pressure are not just big fancy talk. The variety you can get here with your line width is absolutely sublime and is on par with some of the more expensive tablets on the market. The only downside is that there is no tilt support, meaning that the tablet won't really be able to compute the angle that you're holding the pen, and won't be able to give you the absolute control over the position of your pen that you might desire, so this is just something to keep in mind. It only really bothered me as I'm used to using tablets with tilt support. The pen also doesn't follow the nib 100%, there's a tiny gap between where you'll press onto the screen and where you'll end up drawing, so this is also something just to keep in mind. One thing that is great, however, is the ability to hover the pen over the screen. Basically what this means is that when you lift your pen off of the screen a little bit, it will stop drawing, but it will still know that you're there and will allow you to reposition your pen with pinpoint accuracy. I've worked with tablets in the past that didn't have this feature and they were honestly a nightmare. The hover detection is a massive bonus in this tablet's favour. The pen itself has two buttons on it. The lower one, if you click it while hovering over the screen, will switch your pen tool to an eraser tool. I believe this works in every art program, but don't quote me on that. The top button, if you click it while hovering over the screen, acts exactly the same as a right click on a normal mouse. The battery life on this little bad boy is also quite impressive. I spent maybe five to six hours in total on the speed paint and we still haven't dropped low battery. That's better than my Switch. This is also just a very minor nitpick and is absolutely down to personal preference, but I just find the pen itself to be a bit too light for my liking. I like a little bit of weight in my drawing utensils. It just makes them feel a bit sturdier. But like I said, this is just a personal preference. I just find this pen to be a little bit too light. I also noticed that even with those incredible levels of pen sensitivity, it does feel like you need to add a little more pressure onto your pen than you might initially think for the tablet to be able to actually register. This can get a little bit of getting used to, but you can fiddle around with the sensitivity settings to compensate. However, the screen itself is absolutely lovely to work on. The resolution is lovely and very crisp. The menu buttons on the side of the tablet are absolutely brilliant and super handy for configuring your image and colour settings to match that of your main computer. The express keys were brilliant too and are 100% customizable. I configured my tippy top key to the undo command as I make a lot of mistakes while drawing. Uh, the buttons themselves also have a very good satisfying click to them. Honestly, I was super surprised by this tablet. I'm very new when it comes to reviewing things with any level of objectivity, but I have used many tablets in my time as a digital artist and I've had varying degrees of success trying them all. And this one here is honestly one of the best I've used. My complaints with it are honestly just nitpicks and minor quirks that are very subjective, but I'll compile a little list of pros and cons for you anyway, just to be concise. The pros are a very good screen size and resolution that is surprisingly light. Uh, customizable express keys, very easy setup and installation, very helpful passive features such as the hovering and the pen buttons, and it's very affordable compared to higher-end tablets of a similar quality. In fact, a lot of higher-end tablets with a similar display size and levels of pen pressure are normally like around twice as expensive as this one. And being as objective as I can, the cons are no tilt support on the pen and the minor issues with tracking, and not, it's not super portable. Uh, by this I mean, the stand requires four screws to attach it to your tablet, which keeps it nice and secure. However, if you're wanting to stow everything away in the protective bag, you're going to have to unscrew the stand, as it will not fit otherwise. And this could be a pain. This won't be such a huge problem if you're primarily working at one workstation, 
But if you own a laptop or you're changing workstations often, like bringing your tablet to school or work, it might become a little annoying. Otherwise, just make sure you have a microfiber cloth on hand so you can wipe down your screen every so often. And the final major detriment is that if you're left-handed, the logo on the Galman drawing glove will be on the inside and you will look like a fool. That's a joke. <laughs> Obviously, something I can't comment on right now is the longativity. For a lot of higher priced tablets, you're not so much investing in the screen quality or pen pressure, but rather the lifespan and the reliability. As I've only had this Galman for less than a week, I can't comment, so that'll just be something to keep in mind. In conclusion, this little tablet surprised me. It honestly did. It performed well, it did everything it advertised, and I had a great time drawing with it. Like I mentioned before, my gripes with it are very minor and are usually down to nitpicks and personal preference. Uh, but seriously, if you're wanting to get serious about digital art and you don't want to spend an absolute fortune on a pretty decent screen display tablet, I can happily recommend this one. Currently on Amazon, they're listed at $299.99. But for a limited time, you can get a massive $45 discount from the coupon available on the Amazon page. Thank you so, so much again to Galman for reaching out to me and letting me review their tablet. And thank you all for watching. See you next time. Bye.